Hi there, beautiful souls watching. Thank you. I am Gabrielle, retired medium in Germany, and I like to share some of my otherworldly experiences, stories, and insights. So this one is about um, a difficult uh, theme. It's about suicide and suicidal thoughts. As I already told in other of these little story videos, I had the first memory at three years old. I was looking around at my family and if the soul just kicked in, I thought, as a three-year-old, I thought, what am I doing here with these people? And I already knew that they are my biological family and I shouldn't think like that. Uh, so I felt a little bit guilty, but it carried on. I felt wrongly incarnated. I uh, cried myself to sleep at night. I was bullied at school and um, felt as if I never fit in. I was the weirdo until I found... Um, this one video of Dolores Cannon about the three waves of volunteers that came to help Mother Earth because she sent out a call to the universe for help. And many souls came from other galaxies, from other dimensions, from other planets and incarnated here in a human body on Earth to help Mother Earth. And because I always felt weird and strange and like in the wrong movie and I had the feeling I don't want to be here, it's all wrong here, here's so much violence and war and I don't understand it, I don't get it. Dolores explained it so wonderfully in her video. I'm born in the 50s, mid 50s. So she found out with all the clients coming to her in hypnosis sessions of QHHT, quantum hypnosis uh, healing therapy um, or healing technique, that's the official uh, term. She found out that uh, people born in the 50s and 60s were the so-called first waivers the first wave of souls that came from all over the universe to incarnate on earth and help prepare the way for the big change that's coming and we are right in now. The second waivers were, were um, born in the 17th and 18th, 80 years and they already had it a bit easier. They they were interested in all the hippie stuff like um, alternative healing and herbs and nature food and all these things. And the first waivers more or less prepared the way already a little bit by bringing in different ideas, different feelings and were looking for new and other ways to handle all the stuff that's going on here on this wonderful blue planet. And so I had suicidal thoughts nearly all my life. I never did it, thank God, <laughs> because I understood a fundamental thing. When I was 18, I once in a talk opened up my heart and I talked to my elder sister and she was a psychologist and without um, keeping anything in it was a moment of openness I told her that I want to die and I don't want to live here and I want to leave this world and I don't feel happy and I don't know what to do and how to live and it's all not working out and I was more or less bathing in my own self-pity, like, no one understands me, I feel wrong, and I'm wrongly incarnated, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then she said something which I really still love, and I thank her for that, because that made the change in my life. She said, so you feel your life isn't working. And I told her, yes. 
And then she said, and what else? And I described <clears throat> that I already had painted in front of my inner eye this picture. All my friends, the few I had and the people that knew me are standing around my grave and they are crying and thinking and saying, Oh, poor Gabrielle, why did she do that and committed suicide? We loved her and she just left us now here. So totally self-pity. I was 18, remember? <laughs> so still um, more or less knowing nothing and being totally programmed by school and this whole world. And then she said, well... If you really do kill yourself, you will never experience the love of the other ones that you imagine so vividly at your, uh, at your grave when you have your funeral. So don't you want to experience that in life? Because when you're dead, it's over. You can't do it. Wow, that struck me. And I found out, going deep into my feelings, yes, I do want to live, but not under these conditions. And she said, well, it's up to you. What do you make of it? You define the conditions. If you don't open up and show your love and friendship to others, how can you expect that they... Take the courage and show it to you. So that helped me a lot and it made a great change. And I had to work through that <clears throat> still for some years because still I had the feeling I want to get out of here. So I'm that kind of um, fugitive. I wanted to... Uh, not live my life and I wanted more to excarnate than incarnate so in my case I had to really incarnate more into this body into this life into this story that um, is now on the stage okay so still going and still trying to really anchor myself in and not uh, try to escape from this world and the incarnation because I know now there is a reason for everything. Nothing is by coincidence. There is no coincidence. You are exactly where you're meant to be and you can change everything in just one minute if you start changing your perspective, how you look upon things. It's really that simple. If I break it down to the most simple thing, it's if you look a half glass, if you look at a glass with half full of water, you can look at it as half full or half empty. So what do you choose? I chose half full better than half empty. And there's still space to fill it up Totally. So half full can become totally full and it can even overflow and you can start maybe to share and help others. Because I heard lately a wonderful saying and it's funny how it was uh, matching what was going inside of me working as a process. I was seeking all my life for an answer, for God, for love, for whatever you want to call it, this special energy, we have some kind of primordial memory in every culture that we come from somewhere else, from another pay place, and we remember that place as being peaceful and being beautiful. So we like to call this heaven or paradise. The Hopi Indians still have some memory. They say we came from the stars. Our ancestors came from the stars. And 
and that is the happy place or was the happy place and they came down here to earth and here it's hard and difficult because there's so much to learn and there is uh, blockages and things that don't go the way you want them but maybe what you want with your ego mind is not what the soul wants and what you really need you will always find so I hope you can find some relief or at least an idea to look at things different and ask yourself what do I really want? Do I really want to leave this body and maybe miss the great opportunities and the chances that are still awaiting you on the longer journey? If you cut it off right now, so you have to take the rest of your lessons on the other side of the veil. Sometimes it's easier because you're more likely to, to accept and come in contact um, faster and easier with the knowledge, the information, the consciousness uh, that's over there. You instantly know that you are a soul and that there's something bigger on the other side. While here in the material side we often forget it and get so... Uh, hung up with all our daily life and I have to go here and there, have to do this, I have to call her and I have to buy this and go to the grocery store. All this is not that important. Important is with what do you want to fill your life? Make a good choice. Choose happy things. Choose joy and love and friendship instead of dark thoughts. It's really a choice. So, be blessed, dear beautiful souls. I hope you got something out of this. Wish you all the best on your soul journey. Namaste, goodbye.